This is the second video about an exciting tool we are using internally in Skyheart. It is not a product, it is a media player we give away for free. It is based on Raspberry Pi, so you have to buy that hardware yourself, but you can follow instructions on our wiki pages on how to install it. And in this video, I'll look at how we can take Skyheart products and actually control these media players with the Skyheart products, should it be useful in your production needs. It might be so. And also, we will just take a look at this wiki page from the Skahoy wiki that documents how this works. So the features that we have is that we can do full screen playback of video, audio, not full screen, but we can playback audio files and image files, and actually also show websites, full screen, uh, RTSP screens, uh, streams. We can view the web camera of the um, Raspberry Pi. So if you attach a web camera, it will show that. We can create playlists of videos, audio and images. We can use VLC to play that back. We can loop, exit or freeze a playback of a video file. It is also possible to remote control it through a web browser. And that is exactly what you're seeing here, where you can see certain media files are currently playing back according to this. We have also a simple USB key as the medium for holding the file. So it, it is really use, um, easy to uh, put files onto the player by just using your computer to load files on. We can configure all that in JSON and we can also have automatically metadata extracted like thumbnails. They are automatically taken out of the video files and shown um, and you can also customize them if you really will want to. Now, um, this page on our wiki will show you the web UI, explain what it is, how that works. It will also go through some of the six different uh, types of media that we can handle. And then the device core API, which is what I'll show you in a moment, used with a Frameshot Uno. And then finally, just mention that if you plug in a Stream Deck, you will actually have buttons on the Stream Deck you can press to uh, activate these. Now, all the installation instructions is right here. So it is based on an off the shelf Raspberry Pi, number four, number five, whatever you want, uh, 32 or 64 bits, uh, preferably 64 though. Um, it has more features and um, it's, it's a standard installation. And you can follow these instructions to do it. But there's, of course, a few tweaks that you want to do. And also, you need to download a file from our uh, GitHub repository uh, download site for these things and how to set it up for automatic playback and so on. So you follow those instructions. And I won't go through that in any video, actually. You, I would just expect you to go there. And um, in this video, I rather want to spend the time on showing you how we can set this up for the uh, Frameshot Uno. So this product, Frameshot Uno, is a unique rec product from Skahoy. It has color displays and four-way buttons. And um, actually, you can see on screen, we have this one shown. If I press this button over here, I'm basically paging. Um, the, there are two pages of media files at the moment, which I'm going through by this button. And we also see it on screen. So it's actually more useful if we just use the simulation to tool here because it allows me to have two hands to do the video recording. So on the home screen we are at right now, you can see that I have Frameshot Uno set up here. And I have also enabled one media player right now. Now I want to add some more media players. So basically what I do is I add device. I know the IP address of these media players because um, I propose that you actually do manual IP addresses of these. Uh, so I add a device call manually and I'll simply type in the address because what is a little bit unusual if you know Skyhoy products is that the device call is running on the media player. That's interesting for those of you who know what it is because normally when you buy Skyhoy products, you have the so-called device call, which is what talks to a camera or video switcher running on inside the panel along with reactor, which orchestrates the connection between the buttons and displays and the things you are controlling. In this case, we're controlling media players, but the media player device core is not living on the frame shot Uno. It is living in the Raspberry Pi. So there's a device core built into the Pi player that we are inviting you to download. And when I connect it to that IP address, it actually shows me now in a drop down. oh, you have these models you can choose between. So I just choose this model and it, tell, it tells me that this device is defined on a different blue pill. Well, it's actually not a blue pill. It should say device, but it is on that IP address and this is where you can configure it. Or oh, actually it is on 21. Anyway, the ID of this media player, ID number one is hidden in the JSON configuration that is on the Raspberry Pi player. So you need to make sure that these are unique on the players because you cannot change them. This is 
configured on the remote core on the media player. Okay, let's add some more. So we'll just pick the next one here. I have been so clever to give them IP addresses that kind of says something about who they are, where they are and so on. So we'll quickly and simply add them using this little dialog and we are almost done. Pick the last one, confirm, and we are good to go. We are connected to all four media players. That's great. Now, <clears throat> because I want my camera selector, media player selector, sorry about that, <clears throat> to be configured here, and I'll do that using this media player selector. So I add a few entries here, and I'll just make the first one number one, and then um, if I stand in this field and I click, I have this auto incremented. Awesome. Now, Reloading the page, I should see four entries. That's great. If we go to the simulator, in the simulator, you can see over here. Okay, to be honest, I don't know why it says none. It um, I can't remember where that title comes from. Anyway, I pick player one, two, three, four, and you can see that it is changing the thumbnails that I'm seeing. So as I am pressing buttons to select which one, I also see the graphics update on my Frameshot Uno, which is super cool, isn't it? So I'll basically go to player number one and I can now start playing back something. Now, if we look at the screen, if I click here, I should see player number one and camera number one basically changing over to that file that I just enabled. There we go, we are playing this one back. I'll go to player number two. I'll click this one and I'm playing that one back. I go to player number three and I can play back the slideshow. In the next video, the third and final, we'll show you how you can put media files on the USB key and how the configuration works.